September is flying by, now we're about to hit spooky season. And like many other cosplayers, I run into the trouble of what do I wear? So I figured, why not go through all the costumes I've made in the past four years? Welcome to the Spidey Peter's Closet 2024 video. Now the last time I did this kind of video was I think around COVID. Maybe before that? No, I think it was COVID. And since then, I've moved to the United States of America uh, from South Korea, which is where I grew up. If you want to look at all the costumes I made pre-COVID, you can go ahead and click this white bar there. And if you guys want to see all of the costumes I've handmade basically over the last four years, uh, you can pretty much check my playlist, most of them are there I believe in their own individual playlist too. Go ahead and check them out if you want a more in-depth look on how I made these costumes. Now let's get into the costumes. Also, if you're wondering why this video is up later than I said it was, um, I had kidney stones the last couple of days. So that, that, that was fun. Drink water, please. One of my personal favorites and one of the first costumes I believe I finished moving here uh, was my Spider-Man Homecoming homemade suit. Instead of doing what literally every other Spider-Man cosplayer would do uh, and buy all the things that could make this suit, I decided to try to make it from scratch. Like, majority of the things from scratch. So the, I believe the only things that weren't 100% made by me were the socks. Yeah, no, I think it was just that the socks were the only things that I actually like bought, like already made. And I guess the sweatbands for the web shooters, but I even made the web shooters out of foam. So, you know, pretty much everything was made from scratch and it was a great learning experience, kind of sewing and learning pattern making um, just from all like old clothes and stuff. And it's honestly really comfortable to wear. That's one why it's one of my favorite suits. It's very comfortable to wear. It's like wearing pajamas. And I don't know, I just love like the idea behind it in the movies, I guess. Though I will say this suit isn't 100% accurate. I really did try to make everything as accurate as possible um, when it came to like the hoodie and like the um, sweatshirt and sweatpants. But I was still learning at this point and like learning about fabrics and whatnot. I totally used the wrong fabric for the hoodie and the mask piece that was not um, stretched anything. So it's just very stiff. But I did try and that was the point. I didn't even add a hoodie string. So yeah, it, it's not 100% accurate. Same with the goggles. Pretty much everything that I made from scratch has some form of inaccuracy in it just because um, that was my first time having to sew pants and hoodie and a shirt. Just normal clothes <laughs> like that. So yeah, while it's not my most accurate costume, it's still one of my favorites um, in general from Tom Holland's run as Spider-Man. This was my first attempt at doing an originally designed Spider-Man or Spider-Sona, and it wasn't very good construction-wise. It was falling apart at the seams and honestly it was very rushed. Um, I don't know why I felt like I was in such a rush to finish it. Um, and it's also just very disappointing that, you know, I used such expensive fabrics for it. Like the, the blue sections were Aaron Alexandro um, screen printed homecoming fabric that he sold back in the day. And uh, luckily I kept the parts. Um, I kept those parts because it was very expensive. But other than that, um, I trashed everything else because uh, I just didn't really like it anymore after a while and I just got tired of looking at it. So yeah, still kept the expensive parts. <laughs> For the next installment of the Spider-Man Home Trilogy, I wanted to make the upgraded suit Tom Holland wears uh, throughout the movie. The suit has one thing changed from the suit used in Far From Home and that is literally just a more accurate belt. That, that's literally all they changed about it. It's not even like a new suit he gets in the movie. They literally just retconned it in that that was the suit he was wearing the entire time, even though it wasn't. Though I do personally find this one of Tom Holland's best suits he wears in the movie and in the whole uh, trilogy so far. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's my top favorite, but it is up there with the homemade suit. Also, the other suits he wears in that movie 
I, I don't like them. They're, they're, they don't make sense story-wise or aesthetically. I just, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I made this suit using clear dot spandex and that apparently is very controversial because it doesn't shine the same way it does in the movie. It's like more shiny, it's shinier is the correct word to use in that sentence. It was really just trying to kind of emulate what the original suit used. And I also dye sublimated the black sections and then puff painted on top of them. And I even found a way to make the urethane straps that go around the costume. And it was just by using a technique that I called puff printing. Oh yeah, and this was also the first time that I used a 3D printer to print my own face shell. And that was a great learning experience. Following Andrew Garfield's return in Spider-Man No Way Home, I decided I wanted to recreate his costume. This was the second time that I used screen printed fabric for the blue sections and then just puff painting uh, the web lines. I did, however, have to draw every single brick that you see on the red sections. I had to draw them by hand. My God. Though because of that, this is probably one of my most accurate costumes that I've made from the movies, I would say. Just because I, while I didn't do every technique the way that the people who made the costume did, I feel like I got pretty close on how it looks in real life. However, it is not perfect. Um, just because of the zipper system it uses, it gets complicated like trying to sew all that in if you're trying to make it a separate shirt and pants or just one whole suit. I was also like, do I want to say I was in 190s? I was around like 180s, 190s when I finished that suit. So I, I had some weight on me compared to now. So also it was meant to fit my body back then not so much now. <laughs> Again, following his return in Spider-Man No Way Home, I decided I wanted to make Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man costume. This time around, instead of trying to make majority of the suit myself, I decided to take a different route with it. The two suits that I featured before involved a lot of sewing and 3D printing, a lot of things that people don't have access to or necessarily know how to do. So for this costume, I wanted to show people how they can make this specific Spider-Man costume without having to know all these things. They could just pick out companies and purchase it from them and they could still have an amazing result. But you still have to do a little work for it, I will say, because you had to do the puff painting and the shoes. But uh, anyways, yeah. The base of the suit was dye sublimated onto colored spandex, which was different for me. Uh, but luckily print costumes, they had um, an option to print on color spandex, which is revolutionary. Um, if you know anything about dye sublimated costumes being sold through companies. So I did that and then I got the logos from TJAC FX. The shoes were just things I bought on Amazon and all of the uh, web lines were just puff paint and some silver Sharpie. It was really easy to put together, however, I'm not happy with it. There are a couple things with it that just kind of annoy me. The first one being that it didn't even fit me when I first got it. Like it, it definitely doesn't fit me as well now, but like at the beginning of, was it 2023 or 2022? I finished that costume. It was 2023, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 2023. I didn't lose a lot of weight between the time I purchased the costume and then got it. So I don't know why it was so loose on me and it's still pretty loose on me now. Also just puff painting in general is something that I don't enjoy doing anymore. Like I've done it for years, almost 10, I believe at this point. No, it might be even be longer than that, but I just don't enjoy puff painting. It hurts my hand. Like I feel like I got carpal tunnel from it. Um, and it's not the cleanest sometimes. You mess up, things happen, and yeah. Those are the only real two things I don't like about the suit. It makes my childhood self happy that I made it after like years of being obsessed with it. So, you know, what else could I ask for, I guess? Since this costume only really exists in animation, I had to do a couple things to translate that into live action so I can get the most accurate 
uh, costume made, doing that meant having to find a way to recreate the Ben Day dots or the half tones that go on with the costume and then have the texture on it and just overall just trying to make the most accurate costume I could possibly make and just the best quality. And I think I really achieved that with my costume. Um, and like the least accurate thing about the costume, I would say at least as its creator, is just that the face shell isn't accurate. I used a Into the Spider-Verse file instead of Across the Spider-Verse file. So if that's the only thing that I have like a problem with about this suit, I'm completely fine with that. Like the, it's one of my best costumes I've made. I, I, I'll just have to say that for myself. I love this costume that I made. And I recently uploaded a video tutorial about it, so uh, click the white bar up here. The final Spider-Man costume I've made in the last four years wasn't actually like a cosplay costume. It was actually for my Japanese Spider-Man fan film. If you guys want more information about my fan film, go ahead and click the link up here. Basically, this was my interpretation of what a Japanese Spider-Man brought over to the US in the 90s would look like. The suit was actually designed by probably Spider-Man or PSM. It went through a couple of different iterations as we were trying to develop the costume, but we ended up going with his original design and it was just absolutely amazing. Uh, we thought about changing the colors, but we kind of just decided this was unique we wanted to go with it and we just made some slight changes and it, and it just ended up working very well for what we wanted or at least for what i wanted for my version of spider-man in this film it also had a lot of firsts for me it was like my first time using velvet spandex that was not four-way stretch the website lied to me uh it was two-way stretch it had a web cape I used like this visor film instead of just like classic mesh to kind of give it that kind of Power Rangers, Common Rider kind of feel. It was also my first time like delving into 3D modeling for things. Oh yeah, I also made an action figure of uh, the suit for a scene and my friend actually made me this Funko Pop version. He even has a little web cape. <laughs> It was kind of purposely made to look kind of cheap or like they were just on a budget. So I really love the suit and what it means. It's just I have a hard time kind of looking at it um, after stuff. It was also just very hard to wear because it wasn't four way stretch. So I couldn't exactly stretch the suit too much without having seams rip. And then also like the face shell and the, and the mask were not a great combination, <laughs> especially since it wasn't four-way stretch. Oh my God, I had headaches shooting that scene. We had to shoot a fight scene. I, I was miserable. <laughs> now I haven't just made Spider-Man costumes since um, the start of the 2020s. I've also delved into a couple of different characters. In 2021, there were a lot of projects that had Asian representation. Uh, we had Marvel Shang-Chi and we had Invincible. To see that like me as an Asian man was getting represented through these superheroes was something I wanted for a long time. And when we had those two characters premiere in 2021, I wanted to show my pride. So I decided to make uh, the costumes from both properties. The Invincible suit was my first like time delving out of Spider-Man making a Spider-Man costume God, since like 2014, I believe. That was like my first finished non-Spider-Man costume in years. And considering I did everything from scratch, uh, it turned out pretty good, but I, I do plan on remaking it one day because I really do love the comics and the TV show and it's a it's a nice design suit so i will i would like to remake it one day and yeah i just i, I really like invincible finally we have shang chi from shang chi and the ten wait <laughs> shang chi and the legend of the ten rings that is the longest marvel title ever when that movie came out i loved it this is still my favorite phase four movie to have come out from Marvel. I just thought the movie was great and I loved the 
costume that was designed for it, like the dragon scales and how it just looked jeweled and everything. I, I loved it. And so I decided to remake it the best that I could, not using any of the same techniques that they used to make that costume. <laughs> but it turned out pretty well. Um, and then I even printed out the 10 rings. That was a fun experience to try out because I think that was like my first prop. Was that my first? Yeah, it was like my first prop being 3D printed. I didn't do them accurately, let's <laughs> just say. Uh, but I did do my best to try to do my interpretation of what I would want the 10 rings to look like. And I think I painted them before the movie had even come out. So is that accurate? I don't know anymore. <laughs> but yeah, no, I love the character. I'm still waiting on the sequel to come out. Uh, Marvel stopped giving that director jobs. Let him focus on Shang-Chi. I, I want that sequel. G give me wreckage of time. <laughs> but yeah, those were all the costumes I made since 2020, the last four years. And um, actually, no, that's a lie. That wasn't all the costumes I made. I also had to make four more costumes for my uh, Spider-Man fan film, but we'll, we'll touch on those uh, whenever I get to breaking down the fan film. I do plan on doing that if I ever get to releasing it. I just want them to be a separate video because those aren't necessarily cosplays. And to kind of answer the question of like, will I do another Spider-Man costume uh, in my near future, especially with the new movie coming out? And the answer is it depends. Uh, I'm not a big fan on the final swing suit. I, 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 I just don't really like it that much, which I guess is controversial because every spider-man fan seems to be obsessed with that costume like I, I think it's okay for like a cgi costume <laughs> i don't know I, i'm just not a fan so if like if they do end up changing uh the design for the costume which they most likely will to be honest um maybe i'll make it maybe i'll do another run at doing live action spider-man costumes but um other than that i maybe have like one or two costumes I could see myself attempting to do, but not right now. I kind of feel a little Spider-Man burnt out, but like doing so many co like Spider-Man costumes over the years, I do feel a little burnt out with it. Um, I really liked like branching out into different characters and that's what's going to lead me to my next project. Uh, which I'm excited to talk about. Uh, originally, this cosplay um, closet video was going to be an October video, but because um, some scheduling conflicts, um, me not getting my pre-order, that announcement's gonna be delayed to October, which is in like a couple of days. Um, hopefully I get it soon, because I really like would like to announce what I'm officially doing and how I'm doing it. I, I, like I used to. So then I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it's, it's quite fun looking back on some of these costumes. And uh, again, if you're wanting more in-depth looks on these costumes, just check out my channel. I've got so many videos on how to make these costumes, whole entire playlists. So yeah, go ahead and check that out. But uh, until next time, uh, what is Purple Outer Workshop? <laughs>